Hi, I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. We have beautiful weather in Goa today, lots of rain, thunder, lightning. But I want to talk about a non-alcoholic fatty liver. A non-alcoholic fatty liver plagues millions of people across the world. And the point is, if it gets worse, it can eventually lead to a cirrhotic liver and eventual organ failure. So like I always say, symptoms are usually warnings and indicators that our body gives us. And if we listen at the right time, there's a lot that you can do. There is no medicine for a non-alcoholic fatty liver. There is only lifestyle. Yes, there could be vitamins, there could be minerals or supplements that your doctor gives you to support other parameters involved with your liver. And of course, sometimes if you have liver disease and other uh, complications, you will get medication, but it is purely lifestyle. So everyone thinks that your liver can get fatty only with alcohol, but why is it called non-alcoholic fatty liver? Because like I said, millions of people who do not even drink alcohol, not even a drop of alcohol, they get a non-alcoholic fatty liver. It's the buildup of fat in your liver. We can have a little bit of fat in our liver, but when it starts to build up because of our life lifestyle, because of uncontrolled blood sugar levels, insulin resistance, high triglyceride levels, poor lifestyle, poor diet, sedentary, no blood, blood circulation, the fat builds up. After a while, the fat build up and the liver enzyme increase starts to destroy the liver. The liver protects itself by forming a scar. As the scarring of the liver increases, the liver function decreases. And finally, you reach a stage where the entire liver is scarred up, which is called a cirrhotic liver. And there's not much that you can do. It decreases the quality of your life and it can be life-threatening as well. So what do we do? Let's understand the risk factors first because it doesn't involve alcohol, okay? And of course, if you have non-alcoholic fatty liver and you drink alcohol, cutting down your alcohol or completely stopping it can help your liver break down fat more efficiently. So number one, insulin resistance. This is a huge problem, okay? When our insulin is produced, okay, but it doesn't communicate with your cell doors. Every time insulin knocks on a cell door, the door is supposed to open and we take in blood sugar. And that's how your blood sugar levels remain in balance. Now, in a person with insulin resistance, insulin keeps on knocking at the cell door to push in the blood sugar, but the doors don't open because they're insensitive to insulin because of inflammation, because of hormonal problems, poor lifestyle, all of that stuff. So now, because the blood sugar cannot get into the cells, it keeps rising in your blood. And that's how you have high blood sugar levels. And in turn, that starts to damage your nephrons and your kidneys, your blood vessels. And that's why diabetes is dangerous, especially when it's out of control. So that damages your liver as well. It creates the buildup of fatty acids in your liver, leading to a non-alcoholic fatty liver. Diabetes as well uncontrolled diabetes, if you're allowing your blood sugar levels to spike all the time and say that, hey, listen, I'm just gonna eat whatever food I want because I'm on medication. My medication will take care of me. No, it will not take care of you. It will cause other damage like in your liver. Uh, we have uh, corticosteroids where some people have to take it because of conditions, but when you take too many of these steroids, it, one of the side effects is also fatty liver a non-alcoholic fatty liver. So like I always say, if you need steroids, take it. Your doctor's giving it to you, take it. But you have to manage the side effect of your steroids, of any steroid that goes in your system, because every medication has a side effect. And remember, every medication also goes through the liver. So if your liver isn't functioning the right way and is unable to clean out the toxins that we breathe in from pollution, from the food that we eat, from the medications that we take, there is more burden on your liver. So when you're on steroids, you must always change your diet and your lifestyle to, to kind of negate the effects of the steroids to the best of your ability. Sudden weight loss. People get onto a lot of fat programs where they suddenly shrink. They lose weight through unnatural methods. This can also lead to non-alcoholic fatty liver. So you need to understand that weight loss should be gradual and it should stay off your body. You shouldn't be yo-yoing. Today I can lose three to four kilos in a month, tomorrow I put it all back on, and then I get onto another diet. Yo-yoing also creates a lot of confusion with your organs, especially your liver. How do we know if we have a fatty liver and what are some of the symptoms? So sometimes you have a pain in the right upper part of your abdomen. If you have that pain, you may want to get checked up. Your doctor may give you a simple liver profile test to do where you look at your SGOT, your SGPT, which are your liver enzymes, your GGT, maybe your albumin, whatever your doctor gives you. On some cases, they may even do an ultrasound 
to check out your liver. So these are tests where you can determine if you have a non-alcoholic fatty liver. If you're constantly fatigued, you're constantly tired, sometimes you just feel nauseous through the day and there's no trigger, you just wonder why you feel like vomiting but you don't feel, you don't actually vomit. So constant fatigue can be caused by innumerable problems but if it, if it is consistent, you may want to get your liver checked. If you have an enlarged liver or a spleen, so sometimes when you do an ultrasound and the, your spleen is enlarged or your liver, your doctor may further ask you to do testing to see if you have a non-alcoholic fatty liver. Ascitis, when there's fluid build up in the body, a swelling in your belly, sometimes a lot of ascitis leads to fluid build up even in your lower abdomen, in your feet. These are indicators that you may want to get your liver checked up. Mental confusion. You know, all of a sudden you're going through your day and you have this mental confusion and you're feeling nauseous at the same time. So these are some indicators. Jaundice as well. Sometimes jaundice can affect the liver. It can cause a lot of inflammation in the liver. And of course, some medications. So always speak to your doctor about the side effects of your medication. Let me give you an example of one. An ER positive breast cancer patient will be put on tamoxifen. Of course, if that's the right treatment for you, do it. But you need to understand that tamoxifen can also create a non-alcoholic fatty liver. So while you must take that medication, what can you do in terms of lifestyle and food to minimize the effects of the tamoxifen so it does not cause a non-alcoholic fatty liver? So of course, the number one thing is lose weight. Important, if you are carrying a lot of body fat, losing a little bit of weight will help you prevent a non-alcoholic fatty liver. Number two, diabetes. Control your diabetes. Better still, reverse your, di your type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is 100% reversible. Work with your lifestyle, work with your doctors to slowly start getting you off your medication as your blood sugar levels start to get better. Yes, you can reverse your type 2 diabetes. There are thousands of people across the world who no longer have diabetes because they have changed their lifestyle. So rather than just managing it, why would you want to just manage a disease? Get rid of it if you can. And since it's a lifestyle disease caused by poor lifestyle, it can also be reversed by a change in lifestyle or by building a good lifestyle. Your diet is extremely important. Food plays a role in every medical condition in the human body. There are foods that are good for you, foods that are bad for you. So looking at a wholesome diet that suits your bio-individuality, a wholesome diet that suits your conditions, your weight, your genetic makeup, your diet plays a huge role. Exercise again something as simple as 30 minutes of walking. If you don't want to do anything else, be active. Movement is important. But I encourage everyone to exercise because when you exercise, you exercise different muscles, you work on flexibility, mobility, strength, endurance. That's holistic. That keeps you living longer with quality life, in control of your knees, you know, your, the muscles that support you as you grow old. So start off with a small exercise program and keep it consistent. Sleep again. If there's any damage happening to any organ in the human body, guess what? The healing happens while you sleep. So work on your sleep hygiene. Work on the quality of your sleep. Stress. Today we have top doctors from around the world talking about how stress affects every organ in the human body. And there are certain emotions which are related to the liver. Anger, chronic anger, chronic irritability, stinginess where you're constantly irritable if something goes wrong with your finances all the time and all of that stuff. So even emotional connections with liver, with the liver and organs is real. There is a mind-body connection. No matter what science shows you and they separate the liver and they separate the kidney and they separate the heart, every organ is interconnected. And the physical body and the emotional self is interconnected with each other. So you need to understand and treat the body as a whole. Your negative emotions chronically are constantly causing ill health to you and problems to your organs. So you wanna work with your meditation, your pranayama, your silence, your hobbies, acceptance, letting go, all of that stuff that helps you, can, that helps you to change your relationship to stress. Alcohol, it's a no-brainer. Smoking, big problem. Big problem with the liver, big problem with the lungs, big problem with the bladder, please understand that. Whether you smoke or you're a passive smoker, it is affecting you. And of course, we spoke about control over your cholesterol. Mainly check for your triglyceride levels. You want your triglyceride levels to be in check and you want your HDL, which is your good cholesterol, to be at level. Not less, but at level. HDL on the higher side protects your heart and it protects your overall system. Remember the liver is related to the production of cholesterol. Cholesterol is not a bad thing. 
We need cholesterol for your skin, for your brain function, for your hormones, for everything, including your bones. Too much of the wrong cholesterol is a bad thing, but we need cholesterol, so cholesterol is not the demon. So this is what you do, it comes down to your lifestyle. When there's no medicine, there's lifestyle. If you change your lifestyle, we know people who have a grade one fatty liver and they maintain that or they even get better. We know people who can come down from a grade three to a grade two. You do not want to wait until you reach a grade four, which is a cirrhotic liver, which becomes very, very difficult to fix. So again, lifestyle is in your hand. You have an excuse or you have a choice. I hope you make the right choice. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you.